Welcome fellow builders. Join me on an exciting journey as we bring together the worlds of Star Wars and YouTube, creating a real-time subscriber count for your channel, all powered by an ESP32 microcontroller. We'll kick off by diving into the art of the project, the build and the electronic components. We'll wire them up to form the core of our subscriber counter. Following that, I demonstrate how the YouTube subscriber counter functions, along with its web application. You'll see it in action, keeping track of your channel's growing subscriber base in real time. Lastly, we'll take a deep dive into the code, the brains behind our counter, the web application, and even the Wi-Fi updates, all of it masterfully coordinated by a single ESP32 microcontroller. Let's get started. You're not authorized in here. Every one of my projects begins with the humble box. And for this endeavor, I've selected one that fits my project perfectly. It might be missing a front plate, but that's just what I need. In Illustrator, I crafted a front plate design that houses all the required components, the new pixels and the LCD display. For the initial stage, I laser cut the design on wood and chipboard to verify dimensions and aesthetics. This chipboard overlay adds a pleasing depth to the front view, accentuating the display LEDs and speaker holes. Now it's time to laser cut the primary front piece in acrylic. I've painted both the box and the acrylic piece in a sandy shade that really pops. Opting to retain the overlay in chipboard was a good decision, as acrylic will make it excessively thick. To power my YouTube subscriber counter, I've attached a micro USB port at the rear of the box. This port isn't for data transfer or ESP32 programming. We'll be doing that wirelessly, but more on that later. The sole purpose of this port is to provide 5V power to the microcontroller, enabling it to use a standard micro USB cable for powering the ESP32 with the 5V. But all done, we'll get to the wiring shortly. This is the micro USB port I am using, and I have put the link in the video description, including all other electronic components. I've also installed a rotary encoder on the top of the box, intended to be the input device for our YouTube subscriber counter interface. Again, the link is in the video description. Here is how to wire the rotary encoder to the ESP32. So the ground pin is connected to the ground pin on the ESP32. The positive of the rotary encoder is connected to the 3.3 volt of the ESP32. The SW or the switch, the push button is connected to GPIO 14 on the ESP32. The DT data pin of the rotary encoder is connected to GPIO 27 and the CLK pin, the clock pin of the rotary encoder is connected to GPIO 26 on the ESP32. To show the YouTube subscriber count, I use a 3.5 inch LCD display module, which is 480 by 320 pixels. I wanted the largest screen that fits into my enclosure, so the numbers are large enough. The link is in the video description. Here is how to wire the LCD display to the ESP32. So the VCC pin is connected to the 5 volt pin on the ESP32. The ground pin is connected to the ground pin. The chip select pin of the, uh, the display is connected to GPIO 15. The reset pin of the display is connected to GPIO 4. The DCRS pin is connected to GPIO 2. The MOSI pin is connected to GPIO 23. The SCK pin to GPIO 18. LED pin to control the brightness of the screen is connected to the 5 volt pin in my case because I don't want to control the brightness of the display in the code. So I've connected it to the 5 volt. So it will be at a high brightness every time. And finally, the MISO pin is connected to GPIO 19. In this project, 
I've opted for NeoPixel LEDs over standard ones because of their advantage. NeoPixels require only one data wire connected to one GPIO on the ESP32, simplifying the wiring immensely. To give you a comparison, standard LEDs like the ones used in a previous project of mine each needed a dedicated data wire to the microcontroller. That's a tangled mess of wires. NeoPixels are widely available in various packages in the market. I've selected this particular version due to its flexibility, allowing me to position the NeoPixels across different spots on my front panel. All in all, I've uncomparated eight of them. To wire them up, I've connected them in series, with one taking on the rows of the data, power, and ground wires. This setup keeps things organized and clutter-free. Let's look at the wiring of the NeoPixels. So NeoPixels and the ESP32 will be powered by my micro USB port. So the ground terminal of the micro USB port goes to the ground pin on the ESP32. And this ground terminal goes also to the ground terminal of the first NeoPixel. The VBUS pin, which is the 5V pin, the 5V terminal of the micro USB port, goes to the 5V pin of the ESP32. It's going to power the ESP32 with 5V. So you may have a version of the ESP32 with a pin called VIN, VIN. So it's voltage input. It's the same thing. And the VBUS terminal is connected to the 5 volt terminal of the first new pixel and this is important not to power the the new pixels with the sp32 uh, they must have their own 5 volt power from the power source because they consume a lot of current and i'm going to show you that uh, in a moment so if you try to power the new pixels with the sp32 for example with the 3.3 volt pin uh, you're going to damage your microcontroller. So it's important to have uh, to power the new pixels with the uh, uh, an outside power source like the micro USB port I'm using. And the data terminal of the first new pixel goes to the GPIO 12 on the ESP32. So the ESP32 with just uh, pin number 12 will be able to control all the NeoPixels individually, including changing the colors because each NeoPixel has a microcontroller uh, on it. And we connect all the 5 volt terminal of each NeoPixel, all the ground terminal of each NeoPixel, so they are connected in series. Same thing for the data terminal. And again, make sure they are oriented from left to right. So the first new pixels is connected to the data in the, the data inside and the data outside. The last new pixels should not be connected. And everything will be powered by a standard USB cable that will give the five volt. And the five volt will be distributed both to the ESP32 and the new pixels. I tested the power consumption of the new pixels and both the ESP32 and the new pixels are drawing around 126 milliamps. So if I add more new pixels, the current draw will be higher. So it's necessary to power them separately and not with the ESP32. Each time there's a change in my channel subscriber count, a lively R2D2 sound rings out. I set this up with this MP3TF16P player, a compact and versatile audio module perfect for this application. Let's look at the wiring for the MP3 player. And the MP3 player has no pin identification, so I've numbered them on the screen uh, to help you out uh, following me on the wiring. And take note of the notch at the top of the module so that you have the right orientation for the wiring. So pin number one of the MP3 player goes to the five volt pin on the um, ESP32. Pin number two, which the 
which is the RX pin goes to GPIO 16. Pin number three, the TX pin goes to GPIO 17. Pin number seven is the ground pin, so it goes to the ground on the ESP32. Pin number six is connected to one terminal of the speaker, and pin number eight is connected to the other terminal of the speaker. And the speaker must be three watts or less because that's the maximum that the module, the MP3 module, can handle. And here is how the wiring once completed looks like before I close the box. Using the new pixels instead of standard five millimeter LEDs makes the wiring to the SP32 much easier. All right, guys, now it's time for the demonstration of the YouTube counter. So I'm going to use this web application, which is entirely hosted on the ESP32. And the code is available in the video description. And after the demonstration, I'm going to show you uh, the code and make a tour of the code and its functionalities. First, let's see what the, um, the YouTube counter does when I I power it, I plug it into the USB port. Now, first we see in Orebesh that it's connecting to the Wi Fi. And I have currently 648 subscribers on my channel. Now, let's see what happens when I have a new subscriber to my channel. So I got a new subscriber. I am now at 649 subscribers on my channel. It's written on Norebesh and it takes a little time to get used to. I have a green light indicating the new subscriber. I can acknowledge that I've seen it by pushing the push button on the rotary encoder. Now let's see when someone un unsubscribed from my channel. So I have a count of minus one on my counter. So R2E2 is kind of complaining. I have a red light indicating that I've lost a subscriber and I can acknowledge that I've seen it by pushing the push button on the rotary encoder. Now let's see what happens when I have two or more person that subscribe to my channel. R2D2 is very happy. I have two more subscribers. I have a green light and I can acknowledge that I've seen it by pushing the push button on the rotary encoder. Now the counter comes with a small interface that is activated with the rotary encoder. So when I'm turning the rotary encoder clockwise, I activate the view count on my channel. So I have 172,923 views on my channel. And after a small delay, we go back to the counter, the number of subscriber that I have on my channel. And I can adjust the sound of the device by using the rotary encoder. I can accept the new volume by pushing the push button of the, record, the rotary encoder. Now, if you like the video so far, hit the subscribe button to make that counter go sky high. Now, before doing a tour of the code, let's download it. So you go to my GitHub repository and I've put the link in the video description. Once you're there, you go to the green button code. You click on it, download zip. It's going to download a zip file into your download folder. You have to extract it. So I'm going to use 7-zip to extract all the file. And one important thing, you have to remove the uh, dash main in the name of the folder because Arduino will complain if you don't do it. So open the folder, double click on the YouTube counter.ino file, which is the sketch file, to open your Arduino IDE. We need to install some libraries uh, for the code to work. So we need to install the NeoPixel library from Adafruit. So go to the library manager, search for NeoPixel. 
and it's going to be this one from Adafruit. It's already installed on my computer, so you will have an install button like this one. Click it to install the Adafruit NeoPixel. Next, we need to install the TFT SPI library, so search for TFT SPI and install this one from Bodmer. Next, the Arduino JSON library. So search for JSON. And it's going to be this one by Benoit. So install it. We need also to install the, uh, the driver for the MP3 player, which is called EFP Mini Player. And it's this one, the DF Robot DFP Mini Player. So you install it. Now we need to create a file for your Wi-Fi credentials. So you go here under that, you click New Tab, and we have to name the file secrets.h. We'll create a variable to store the SSID name of your network. So this is the SSID of your Wi-Fi network. So put the name of the SSID here between the quotes. We'll create a second variable called password. So this will be the password of your Wi-Fi network. Put that between codes, between quotes, the SSID and the password. So the SP32 will be able to connect to your Wi-Fi network. Now, before uploading the code to uh, the SP32, we need to make sure that we have the right driver for the display. So if we go to the sketch, at the top of the sketch, we right click on the TFT SPI uh, header file and we go to go to definition here in the user setup right click on this first you must make sure that you have the right driver in my case it's the uh, ili 9488 driver that i'm using for my display so you just have to uh, to have one line uh, selected in this file and if you go here into the user setup same thing just one line uncommented for your driver so make sure you uh, you have the right driver selected in the tft spi library now we are ready to upload the code so make sure you have the uh, esp32 board selected with the right com port let's upload the code to the esp32 Perfect, the code is now uploaded. Let's do a quick tour of the code. Here is the MP3 player definition. And this is the files uh, that are numbered that I have on my SD card for the MP3 player. And I'm, I will put the link in the video description if you want to prepare your SD card with some sounds so that you can use, use your own sound for your project. And for the sound, I'm using this website, 101soundboards.com. And this is where I picked my R2D2 sounds. So you can choose uh, various, uh, th there's uh, a lot of sounds related to sci-fi movies. So you can go to this website to pick your sounds that you want for your uh, YouTube counter. If we go down a little bit. Here I'm storing some variables into, into non-volatile memory of the ESP32, the volume, um, the channel ID, and the API key to retrieve the YouTube subscriber count of your channel. And I'm going to show you in a moment how to set this up uh, using the web application. Next thing important is this file, the counter web header file, and in it, uh, we define the host name to access the web application that is stored on the uh, ESP32. And in my case, I call it YouTube and you can change it. 
So if you go into your browser and you type youtube.local, the dot .local is uh, necessary, and you hit enter, you're going to see the uh, web application that is hosted by the uh, ESP32. Okay, in the sketch file, there are several sections where you can change your code. So we have the interface function of the YouTube counter using the rotary encoder. We have the, all the display functions for the, the LCD display. Go down a little bit. The MP3 functions and the functions to retrieve uh, YouTube statistics, mainly the subscriber count and the number of views that you have on, on your channels. Now let's configure the YouTube settings. So you click in the web application on YouTube settings button, and we have to provide the channel ID and an API key. So the channel ID, it's easy. You go into your YouTube studio under the customization page and under basic info tab here in the channel URL section, you will find your channel ID, which is in my case, this one. So you copy that and you paste it into the field channel ID. You need an API key to be able to retrieve your YouTube subscriber counter. So to get that API key, you have to follow this guide from YouTube. Um, you need to create a Google account and you go to the Google Developer Consoles to obtain the credentials. So follow this guide and to obtain the credentials, and I've put the link for the page in the video description, you go to this uh, page and you have to follow these sections on how to create an API key. And once you have your API key, you go back into the web application and you paste it in the API key section and you submit the form and both the channel ID and the API key will be stored into the non-volatile memory of the ESP32. So you don't have to enter it even if you power down uh, the ESP32. Let's look at the upload code functionality of the web application so you can upload the new code to the ESP32 over Wi-Fi. So you go into the your Arduino IDE and you uh, make any changes to the code that you want. You can adapt it as uh, your wish. And you go into the uh, sketch, export compiled binary. So it's going to compile the code. Now the code is compiled. You go to sketch. Show sketch folder, and we're going to upload in the build section this file, the YouTube counter .build bin. So what you can do is just copy this uh, path. You go into the web application. You click, you click upload code, choose file, and here copy the path. Enter, and now you choose the .ino.bin file, and you click Open. Make sure that you have the right file, and you click Update. So it's going to update the ESP32 code into, into the uh, ESP32. And that's it. The code is now uploaded. So go check the video description. I've put all the links that you need for the electronic components and the guides and also other videos that can help you do more things, for example, with the MP3 player. So thanks for watching.